Hey guys, Grumpy here with the last episode of Long Haul. So, um, I've decided to wrap this series maybe a little sooner than people were anticipating. Um, originally, I was going to wait until all my colonies were size 6. Um, I was going to wait until we had like a million credits, etc, etc. Uh, however, just looking at the scope of things, um, I think I've... I've given enough demonstration on how to develop your colonies successfully, right? Like we went through all the, the tough, um, <laughs> the very tough trials and tribulations of uh, establishing a colony in 0 0.96. Um, we went over the new hostile mechanic, hostile activity mechanic, um, went through what to do incorrectly and then how to resolve it. And we've been pretty successful so far um, with just... Um, with uh, managing it and getting it back down to a reasonable level, I see absolutely no reason why we won't end up with zero event progress or at least be under low impact. Um, and as a result, our colonies have flourished. So we're currently positive on all of these colonies. Um, Osiris is Osiris is pretty much taken care of. It is our golden child. It's producing 131,000 credits a month. Um, I mean, you can't really ask for much there. The only way to make it more profitable from this point on would be to resolve the remaining uh, imports that we have. So ways that we can do that is definitely using things like our Nanoforge, um, our, if we had a catalytic or Cyclotron core, we could get more fuel out, right? Like there's different things we could do to produce more um, in-house that would satisfy the needs of the rest of our colonies. Um, thus making Ra more profitable, Anubis more profitable, etc, etc. Um, so one change that I would make, probably what I would recommend is, um, as far as path or interest go, it might be better, con considering it works the same way as uh, pirate interest, where they pick like the worst planet and focus on that. It might be worth taking fuel production out here uh, of Ra and then putting it on a different planet so ideally you'd put it on something like set where you could still use that core because it has no atmosphere and then you'd be splitting your path of interest between two planets because um set would have less interest thus wouldn't contribute to um your overall path of interest that might be the case that's something that we might need to explore a little later on i'll make a colony guide on that but um that would be like the one change that i would make um other than that i think one thing that's missing or one thing that you definitely should do um, ahead of time when it comes to colonies is one, start with a lot more credits than I did. Uh, so I settled three colonies, I think with either one or two million credits, even when I was, regardless of hostile activity, that is a horrible idea. Um, typically you should wait until you have um, about two million credits probably even 3 million credits now in 0 0.96 per colony. And if you're going to set up multiple colonies, you need overhead because you're going to be paying additional costs on all of those worlds. So you might need even like 4 million credits per colony if you're going to do that. Uh, and then next up, build all of your uh, stability buildings first. And don't, don't worry so much about Freeport. Um, just pay your hazard pay. Make sure you're stable, and in turn, that's going to keep down the hostile activity very low. Uh, we got all the way up to um, high impact, almost near extreme impact, uh, to a point. And the minus stability and the accessibility especially is just devastating to um, growing your colonies. So you really want to make sure you build your stability buildings first. So that's why you're going to need more of a bankroll in 0 0.96, because you won't be able to build your industries to start generating those profits like you could in 0 0.95. So in this episode, uh, we're going to go ahead and pull out our Legion and give uh, Kanta a very uh, warm thank you, if we can find our Legion. We'll take some griffins as well. Um, give her a very warm thank you for all of the times, I think it's on Ra, that uh, she visited our colonies with her pirate fleets um, and just really made this series a little more exciting than it otherwise would be. Um, so Kanta's Den is located in uh, the magic system. 
it's an orbital station and it's a size four world so i'm guessing it's a small base um i haven't had a chance to go over there look at that i haven't had a chance to go over there and scout it out um i haven't been to constant in a long time but uh let's see is our legion here it's not but we found more eradicators awesome uh is it by set now we need crew We'll just borrow some crew. Okay, we'll just take some crew. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we'll go say thank you to her, and then uh, we'll call the series here. Uh, we're producing. We're producing one hundred and twenty thousand credits a month. Where is my legion? Do I have it in my fleet and I don't know? No? Okay. Leave it on Anubis? Yeah, there it is. Okay. And then we're gonna do a lot of crew for this. Oh, we have full rain spool. Probably use that. Um, let's see. We need... About 400 crew. Cool. So, uh, Raza fuel producer. So I'm um, um, I'm also wrapping up the series because I'm very excited for what we have coming next. Um, this has been a mostly uh, peaceful series. Hello. Uh, as we fight a pirate fleet very quickly, uh, this has been a mostly peaceful series. And I'm very much so itching to get back into combat focused. Um, yeah, we just full assault this. Uh, a combat focused uh, let's play. So I think out of most um, content creators for Star Sector, I'm kind of known for my combat, um, being fast and aggressive, um, leading the fight, and taking on fights probably that I shouldn't. <laughs> um, and I'm happy with that. And I want to demonstrate some of the new ships, right? There are tons and tons of new ship types in the game that we didn't get a chance to explore because we've really been limited on the markets available to us. Um, now that we have a couple of blueprints, we can print ships, but none of them are like, you know, the new, um, none of them are the um, new like Sindrian versions of ships. None of them are the, um, oh, let's just kill the sabos. Oh, it's proc. Oh, hello. Uh, let's go ahead and grab these three. Bring this over here. Should we bring these two over here? Uh, you guys can go over there. Uh, that's an appropriate fight. You can escort here, and then you can barrel your way this way. Uh, you I need over here, and then uh, you can deal with that. I think that's fine. I think we fast enough that we can avoid this eradicator. If we get destroyed, we'll just jump an eradicator wrong. Um, yeah, but we don't see like the Syndrome versions of the new ships. We're not seeing any of the um new capital ships none of that and that's kind of something that i had in mind um as we started this series and then i realized if we wanted to do that then we can't both do that and have a um trade focused um let's play so that's another reason why i'm very ready to transition over to something different That time to kill. Cool. I'm very excited to actually have good weapons uh, for once. <laughs> I'm excited to go back to raiding convoys and uh, getting into all sorts of nonsense. Let's put our shield up. Uh, that we've been missing so far. 
that said, it has been um, very fun relegating myself to a not really. Um, what am I trying to say? Not really like a you know backline role. Like as you see, I'm still being very aggressive, um, but not being like the leader on the battlefield and relying more so on the AI to get things done. Uh, we'll pursue them. We'll just let our second command handle it. Uh, we don't need any more eradicators. So we just say thank you. And we carry on. Uh, we want to fight this so that we get the minus one. I guess we'll go like that. Oh, come on. <laughs> we'll take command of the action, we'll deploy ourselves, and we'll see if we can catch the world's fastest dram. Uh, we'll deploy our monitor to the flank and see if the monitor will be able to intercept the dram as well. We want to do it like this. Let's see if we can catch this guy. We ought to be faster than it, especially if we fire missiles at it and uh, encourage it to put his shields up. Yeah, so going back to uh, being able to like fight bounties and um, being able to just take on bigger and more interesting fights because we have better ships, better weapons. Uh, I think we'll be a little more exciting. All right. There we go. We get it to fly sideways. It puts its shield up, it slows down, and then let's go ahead and fire some sabots at it. There we go. Alright, good job everybody. Everyone stand down. Alright. I am going to install this while we're here. This will generate path or interest. I'd it's fine. Um, I think we're low enough stability that rock and tank it. We'll turn off report status. No, we won't. 30,000 credits a month? Okay. Well, <laughs> we're just going to have to deal with pathers then. It's fine. All right. Let's go ahead and get out of here. and head on over to the magic system. Just an atlas floating in space, okay. Probably one of my atlases for my convoys. Um, well, that's fine. All right. uh, I guess while we're flying here, um, I wanna say thank you for all the support. Obviously, thank you for all the comments. Uh, I read each and every one, even if I don't get a chance to respond to them. Uh, it does mean a lot. Um, yeah, there were some points in the series where it got very tough. Uh, we were losing, you know, almost like 200,000 credits a day or a month and uh, still just like bashing my head against the wall to figure out this colony stuff. Uh, I'm happy we did figure it out and I see what the oh, let's make sure our um, transponder is very on for this I see what the developers were going for oh that's a big that's a big boy station we should still be able to take care of this let's stop by 
It's not about Nova Maxios. Do a quick refit. Um, I get what the developer was going for, making colonization take longer um, by prioritizing stability first. And it makes sense. Um, colonies are very, very uh, late game thing. They're very powerful. They generate a lot of resources for you. Uh, once you get to the colonization stage, um, that's when like the true end game begins. So um, it makes sense. It definitely makes sense. I can appreciate what they were going for, but not everybody would see it that way. Um, yeah, hammer barrage. Let's get it. Uh, let's go with drive field and the cargo holds. And looking at this, I'm not exactly sure we have what it takes to take down this station. But we can try. We can certainly try. Uh, so a level 3 station is a little bit more difficult. What you really want, and what I don't have so much... Actually, I have a couple of Reapers. You really want a lot of Reapers so that you can tear apart... Actually, yeah, let's do that. So that you can tear apart the armor and break it off as quickly as possible. Uh, yeah, so let's let's actually do that. Um, on our... On our guys, let's go ahead and swap out some Reapers, especially like you. Yeah, you just want a lot of high explosive, really. However, you can get it. Uh, what else we got? That should be good. Okay, so let's go take care of the pirates. Now that's considered a blue giant. Interesting. Hello, Kanto. Hi. Yes. Um. Oh, no, definitely not. Is there no option to say, hey, I'm declaring war on you? I can insult her. Okay. Anyway, let's go ahead and just consider our military options. Imagine a dialogue went back and forth between uh, Europa and Kanta, something along the lines of, hey, leave my colonies the fuck alone. All right. Kanta didn't like that. Europa doesn't care. She's going to go ahead and engage the battle station. And let's begin. Um... Do we hop in the Legion for this one? We don't hop in the Legion for this one, but we definitely hop in the Eradicator with the Reapers. I think that makes sense. And let's continue to battle here. So let's... Uh, oh, we get everybody. Oh, fantastic. I thought we would have to make some concessions. No, let's deploy. Let's begin. Now, it is important that we go ahead and lead uh, with our two largest ships. Let's go ahead and pull everyone else to the side here. Pull everyone else to the side here. The reason being is we don't want them to get overwhelmed by all the, the um, fire from the battle station. We want our ships in position first, and then we can move into support. So let's go ahead and let uh, this tick quickly. Right, we're going to go ahead and set you guys to group one, and then we'll set everybody else let's do it this way and then hold shift control to deselect and we'll set you guys to group two and then we'll actually grab the a uh, half again and then we'll set you guys to group three just in case we need to move things around so we have one a uh, two and three let's actually station them a little closer over here and then we can cancel that order all right 
So let's go ahead and move people into position so we see our target. Alright. Let our legion get a little bit closer and then we can start uh, moving in ourselves. We'll go ahead and issue that eliminate order, and then we'll go ahead and put the monitor on this as well. Upgrade that to eliminate. Cancel this order. And like you can see um, how much damage uh, the battle station, the tier 3 battle station can put out. Actually, now that I look at it, I think this is just tier 2, because I think tier 3 has the bulbs that also rotate and have their own platform. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue. Uh, we do have to be careful, right? Like, this is not a pushover. Uh, this still can be damaging. Okay, looks like our Legion is in place, so now we can go ahead and move everybody up. Groups two and group three, and go ahead and get involved in the fight. And now I think we just sit back and watch. So we want to make sure that we are on our Reapers. We want to make sure that we break these bulkheads while the shield is down. So we switch over to our Reapers. And we watch our Reapers absolutely get devastated <laughs> by the uh, PD. Looks like we got a soft target right here, so let's go ahead and fire a Reaper. We landed one. Oh yeah, we oh we definitely have this. <laughs> oh, this fight was never an issue. Oh man. What a shame. I think what really helped us there, not only with the overwhelming firepower so we can dis uh, disperse all that damage, but uh, the Legion with all those daggers just really overwhelming the PD and just providing that nice uh, bit of damage there. And down goes Kanta's precious station. Thank you very much. And let's launch a raid. Do we? Oh, we don't have any Marines. We should have brought Marines. Oh, well. So, and then I think uh, as a final message to Kanto, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're not going to sat bomb. We're not that evil. Uh, Europa doesn't have it in her body, but she will tactically bombard them as a warning. Cool. Reducing their stability by one. And can we talk to her? No, we can't. Uh, this won't stop the pirates, of course. Uh, they still generate from everywhere, all the time. But that did feel nice. Alright. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, other than that, Grumpy out. <laughs>